In hard surface modeling, there are a lot of tricky situations you'll run into sometimes, and unfortunately, the vanilla tools in Blender sometimes cannot handle them. So in this video, I want to show you some really powerful tools you can use and how to approach these situations when they come up. So the first example I want to show you here is one that I ran into just the other day. I was working on this little model right here, this little sub D type thing. And I found a situation where I wanted to have like a nice little outline of detail. So let me delete this real quick. I wanted to have a nice outline of detail all the way around here. And you're going to see I did that by simply applying a floater detail, just a strip of quads and then unwrapping that over a trim sheet. Now, situations like this are kind of difficult to approach because getting a strip of quads like this that follows the curvature of this mesh perfectly can be, can be difficult. So let me show you how I actually approach this. It's way easier than you might think. And then I want to show you another really cool situation which uh, will probably blow your mind as well. So check this out. The first thing I did was I duplicated this piece and applied all the modifiers. Um, so you can do that with hard ops by just going to Smart Apply and Shift clicking on that. So what that'll do is basically make a duplicate and apply the modifiers for you. Okay. So check this out. All I really had to do to get that strip of quads here, that little detail, was I had to select all these edges here on the bottom and then offset them. Now you could just go around here and control click around. It's a little bit annoying, but it does work. Um, alternatively, you could try alt clicking on the edges, but you're going to see it doesn't really know which ones to select because, you know, the uh, we have like n-gons and triangles and things like that. So instead, what you could actually do here, instead of control clicking all the way around, what you can do is use the mesh machine L select feature. So what you do is you select an edge and then you go to Y, select, L select, or what you can do is select an edge and then just alt click on that edge again. It'll do the same exact thing. Look at that. Super easy. Now check this out. To actually offset this edge to get the strip of quads, what we can do is use the feature called offset cuts. Now this is experimental, so make sure in Mesh Machine you actually turn on the experimental feature. Now check this out. If we go to Y, offset cut, what this actually does is it eats the geometry as it goes over it. Like if you don't do that, if you try to just bevel it, you're gonna see it just collapses. It doesn't work very well. But if we use the offset cut feature, it'll actually eat up that geometry as it goes through it. It's really powerful. Sometimes it doesn't work. You just have to find like the right spot, but you know, point one in this case works pretty well. And we're just about there. Now what I need is to select this entire strip right here and uh, turn it into quads because with UVs, um, you can't straighten out UVs if they have end gons. You need to make sure it's a strip of quads. So what you can actually do here is use the L select feature again, select an edge and then alt click the edge again. And then I just go into the Boolean cleanup tool. And if that doesn't work, you probably have a stray vertex somewhere. Here we go. So what we can do is use the Boolean cleanup tool and we're gonna be using the um, algorithm A in this case because I only want to affect the outer vertices. I don't want to collapse these ones right here. So once we do that, everything turns green and that means everything has kind of been merged together and now we have a strip of quads here. And then we basically just invert the selection with control I, delete the faces, and then you could use something like decal machine to just unwrap a trim sheet. So you know you could go and just find a, a trim sheet or something. And just kind of unwrap a detail over that. Look at that. Really, really powerful stuff. And you can get some pretty intricate and interesting looking details. So that's how I did that. Now I want to show you another um, interesting situation in which you could also use these tools. So check this out. I'm just going to start a new Blender scene here. So what I'm going to do is use maybe a, we'll just add in a UV sphere and we'll smooth it out. And what I'm going to do is duplicate the sphere. And let's say I wanted to kind of merge these together union them together. What I could do is shift click on this one and use the, you know, a union boolean, right? And then all I'd have to do is apply that boolean modifier so we have access to it, right? So we'll apply that boolean and you're going to see this uh this geometry is pretty nasty around here. So in this situation you could use the same exact tool because if we try to alt click it won't work, so you either have to control click around or you can just use the mesh machine else select feature, so alt click on that edge again. It's going to immediately know what to select. 
And then at this point, we can once again use that offset cut feature. So we go in here and we just kind of offset this a little bit, maybe go a little bit wider. Now check this out. What this does is it gives us room to apply a bevel because without that, it is going to be a mess, which is why we want to use that offset cut to give us a buffer for that bevel. So check this out. What I can do is, you know, bevel it like that. And now we have a bevel. Now trying to run a sub D on this is just going to be a mess because we have all sorts of n-gons around there. So although it might kind of work, it's going to collapse around this portion. It's just not going to work very well. So um, if you're getting a little bit crazy with uh, Blender add-ons, you might have quad remesher. And this is a good situation where you could actually remesh this entire thing. So right now, take a look. We have how many tries? 4,000 tries. So maybe I put the quad count here to 4,000 and remesh it. Look at that. Perfect. Honestly, I could go even lower. I could go to like 500, I bet. It'll be kind of blocky, but it works. And then, you know, you could increase the resolution with a sub D if you wanted to. And this stuff is just super powerful, guys. You don't need to do a completely destructive sub D based workflow all the time. You have other tools at your dispense. So this is just some, you know, powerful situations in which you could use Mesh Machine and some of the tools available to you that aren't necessarily available in native Blender. And the best part about this is compared to like a CAD software or, you know, Maya or 3ds Max is these tools are really inexpensive because, you know, a Maya subscription is what, hundreds or thousands of dollars, I don't know. And CAD software can get pretty pricey as well. So I just kind of wanted to show you some alternatives because I know some people are going to say, well, why don't you just use CAD? Well, I mean, there's so many tools available at our, at our dispense nowadays that even in the trickiest situations, I oftentimes don't even need to use a CAD-based software because the tools that are here in Blender now are just so incredibly robust. So just a quick video I wanted to make on this stuff, and hopefully it kind of gives you some ideas for your workflow as well, and how you kind of approach these tricky situations by using an add-on like Mesh Machine and just kind of working a little bit more smart as opposed to longer. That's all you really need to do in most situations. So hope the video helped, and I'll see you in the next one.